we're exploding the myth here that artificial intelligence is superior to natural intelligence. There's any number of examples of this. Um, I think most of you will find that daily life has become a mental exercise uh, and technically what some would refer to as a left brain exercise where emotional intelligence and natural intelligence is being uh, pushed to one side in favour of little things like text messaging, email for business, which generally takes a lot longer to get anything done. If you look at examples through history of a number of incredibly, uh, I suppose you could call intelligent, uh, notable historic figures that have uh, built civilizations far more practical and harmonious with our environment than our own. Um, we can see again that in those times they didn't have an artificially intelligent system um, by which to deduce those solutions for their practical uh, problems that they needed to overcome. There have also been religious figures throughout history that have imparted to man um, a higher thought, a higher way of thinking um, based on emotional intelligence and spiritual intelligence. So when we have a system as a modern society being run pretty much by artificial intelligence and automation, um, we are in effect roboticizing humanity to its detriment and to the detriment of the practical functioning of a society. And people behind it, as I've mentioned before, have assumed that artificial intelligence makes things faster and easier. And uh, if there's ever one basis on which to never uh, change the way a society works, it is on what makes things faster and easier because in doing that, it's the same as um, cutting costs on building a home, for example. Let's do it faster and easier um, until such time as, oh, look, the odd, the odd, um, the odd exception where a new type of material is devised and it just makes it faster and easier to put up the frame, for example. Some people have metal frames to their homes now instead of timber. Um, that aside, some of those religious figures um, commanded armies and not that I'm suggesting war is a good idea, but in context with their situation. Some of them were master tacticians. They knew exactly where to be and when, and they knew exactly how to uh, divide and conquer. I mean, look, as I said, I'm not suggesting that that's a way of going about things, but they didn't have a machine telling them how to do it. Um. Irrigation systems in ancient Rome uh, were far superior to our own. Uh, <laughs> ancient Egypt, I mean, the, the, it, the list is endless throughout history. And um, up until uh, I think, you know, we, well, we could argue that, that con conditions for living weren't as good the uh, medicine, um, medical industry wasn't as good, but none of these the improvements that we made in those areas are a result of artificial intelligence. In fact, even now, you can go to a GP um, with a complaint, a physical complaint, 
and they they will likely have a, absolutely no idea of the several different things that could be causing it and they go for the for the first one and the standard one that they can think of despite the fact that um all the information has been available to them for a very long time firstly through medical journals and uh secondly online so even when artificial intelligence gives people the answer the intelligence of the human using it is really what drives the bus it is an information tool for calculation, uh, facial recognition, goodness me, so many things that they're trying to apply it to now, um, even factory work. Um, we, we really end up with, with a very homogenised version of society. You may have also noticed that everywhere now is being converted into <clears throat> a Facebook lifestyle, which looks a little bit like this. Um, faded blue jeans, um, no rips, uh, straight leg, um, some type of sand shoe, uh, a very neutral toned natural coloured T-shirt or shirt of some description, a similar, you know, a light jumper, um, very uh, uh, conservative hairstyles, um, beige walls and cacti and scented candles. This is Facebook. This is a Facebook lifestyle. Um, it, it has a certain tone to it. It is, it is the artificial reproduction of the natural world, um, which strips away the colour of flowers um you'll notice that 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 you'll see in in even in the way uh properties are being developed now new real estate properties that that there's a lack of of fauna uh, sorry flora and they're opting for um the more uh, I don't know, like maybe a Japanese style garden, or they'll say it's because it's low maintenance. But again, faster and easier doesn't doesn't make it um, honourable to the natural world. So there's a Facebook lifestyle that's actually being presented, um, and everybody's sort of catching onto it like a bit of a virus because they see pictures on Instagram and. And Facebook of, you know, white pot plant holders with little cacti in them um, or some other little sort of intricate type of, you know, plant that sits in the corner. Um, but it does not have flowers. There are no colours. There is nothing outside. There is no colouring outside of the lines with, with artificial intelligence. It's, it's homogenised, flat, artificial reproduction of what is supposedly a natural environment and yet, None of these people are living in log cabins, for example, or or sitting by an open fire at night. No, they they clap their hands and the ducted heating comes on, or the heated floor, um, and everything is sort of simulated. They've created an environment artificially where everything's faster and easier, but the natural element that they try and bring to a home um, is simulated. It's artificial to create breezy open spaces and very and all like there's there's actually no character left even in the way people furnish their homes anymore, at least not in terms of what you see in in um, on the internet when you're looking for real estate properties and that's just one example. Everything looks the same. They're all trying to make it look the same as everything else um, so that it fits the mold of what's aesthetically pleasing. Now, if you're smart, if you're technically smart, you want a quick sale, what you're going to slot into where the wider market is. But again, this is all to do with money, um, making things faster and easier for people to make money. And in doing so, you were cutting costs, so to speak. And um, 
we're losing everything that that was soulful about society even 30, 40 years ago. So it is something to keep in mind. Artificial intelligence is not natural intelligence. Natural intelligence will always be far superior. Uh, artificial intelligence can't come up with a solution that is not um, programmed into it. It gets to a point where it can actually make, it can deduce what would otherwise be a good solution. Um, and I don't doubt that in many instances it will come up with an answer that has everyone standing around going, wow, I never thought of that. That's incredible. How did it think of that? Great. It's a machine that came up with it instead of the human being who is capable of coming up with it himself. Now, what are we really doing? What are we really doing when we're handing over our uh, thinking capabilities, our natural intelligence, our heart intelligence, our emotional intelligence, our spiritual intelligence? What are we doing when we are muting it in ourselves and handing it over to a machine? What are we doing? Not just in the the short term practical sense of oh well we're just making it it's, it's we'd have to spend less time thinking about it we don't have to think about it anymore we can just get in the machine to do it I mean what are we actually doing to ourselves and our society what happens when we come across a problem and we don't have time to consult the machine we have to think of it what happens to all these circuits in our own biological system, if we're no longer thinking or intuiting what the answers should be, the best way that we can, what are we actually doing? We're abdicating our humanity. We're sacrificing what it is about us as organic, intelligent life forms, naturally intelligent with our environment responsive to our natural environment and we're um handing it over to somebody else we're, we're making artificial intelligence the ceo you know or the area manager instead of the worker who has to deal with the practical effects and consequences of every decision that comes from a higher up so where there's this gap between um, the machine and the human, it's it's wide and it's long and it's deep and it's lasting. Um, that's pretty much what I wanted to say for this morning. It is, um, again, an interesting uh, discussion because exploding the myth that artificial intelligence is superior to natural intelligence is um, it should be is inferior, artificial intelligence is inferior, sorry, to natural intelligence. It should be obvious, even simply by the word used to define it, artificial versus natural. We are at war with our natural environment. Um, whether there is a global warming issue or not, where we are at war with our natural environment, we are not on the right track. Um, artificial intelligence is part of that. Um, it will only ever be as good as the human using it. Okay, well, here's another example. <laughs> the person A wants to find something online, some information. So they punch in a search term and they get a certain result. Person B wants to do the same thing. They punch in a search term. They get a different result. Why? Because person A and B typed in different search terms and person B just happened to find a better result than person A. Why? Because the natural intelligence of the human being made a different decision in how he wanted to access and functionalize the artificial intelligence to which he was referring for information.
If someone wants to run their business by email only and no phone calls, well, what good is that if they're never going to check their spam folder where a lot of emails end up? What good is that if they're waiting around for someone to email them back instead of following up again with another email the next day or putting high priority on the email itself? Whereas the person who doesn't make these decisions for themselves can be sitting there waiting for over a week for a return email and holding everybody's lives up by a full seven days, a whole entire seven days, which is absolutely massive, massive. When you think of the human lifespan, someone's wasting one week, a whole week or two of your time because they're sitting there waiting for a reply email. We have, we have lost, we have dropped the ball. Artificial intelligence is not making things faster and easier. If we are making ourselves more stupid, then artificial intelligence can only ever be accessed and controlled by stupid people. So even where it's suspect, it's assumed that artificial intelligence is in charge, it's not. The people running it are. Look at the internet. Look at the number of changes that get made. Look at social media and how many times they change the format and the engineering of their networks and it wasn't even broken to begin with. Look at how difficult it is to get around Windows 10. I mean, it, all the functions are different, everything. You've got to search through 10 different frigging folders to find the right one. I mean, they are neurotically They're trying to improve things that were never broken. They never needed fixing and it's all just so that they can create a justification for why they still enjoy sitting in dark rooms, plugging things in and talking to computers and making calculators uh, think beyond numbers. I mean, we're, we're catering to um, a childhood fantasy um, of roboticized humanity and we're trying to humanize the robot and human it will never be i think in every single movie that's ever been made with robots that that comes up that comes up is it human or is it not and hollywood tries to make out that the robot's human well no it's not it's not is it capable of love no because it's a chemical it's a natural chemical thing <laughs> it's not a mechanical thing so Something to think about anyway. I uh, wanted to get that one off my chest. Thanks again for listening. Um, please check out the books. Uh, the second one is this, the sequel to Simulation is is on its way. It might be a little while yet, quite a bit to get through. It's a much longer book um, in the middle of editing at the moment. Um, Lights is uh, a good short read if you're into novellas. Um and please do check out uh, the previous podcasts and uh, the evidence in the files. But, yeah, summed up in the book Simulation, uh, the transcripts, which you can get only at Amazon, um, and you can grab that in paperback and ebook. Thanks so much. Catch you next time.